This happened last month, and I'm still in shock. My boyfriend and I went hiking in Alabama. We both are avid campers and organize many camping trips, but this was our special tour, so we chose a high range surrounded by deep green woods. Alex is very sporty and loves joking to cheer up the mood. The woods were deep and we had to carry a map of the area so we wouldn't get lost. After parking our car at the road near the hiking trail, we took our backpacks and started the journey. The plan was to hike to the big waterfall amidst the forest and then come back eventually. The waterfall was located right in the middle of the forest, so we had to walk a moderate amount of distance. I felt refreshed as soon as the pure air touched my lungs. I've always been a fitness freak, so hiking is like meditation for me. Luckily, Alex shared the same interest, and that's why we fell for each other. Isn't the weather lovely? No more than you. Oh, stop it. Don't be so cheesy. Look there. As I followed the direction he pointed to, Alex tickled me in the waist <laughs> and ran ahead of me like a six-year-old. You know I'm faster than you. Then why are you standing so far? I ran to him, and he started running ahead again. He was mocking me, and I was laughing too while chasing him in those woods. Life is really fun with him. After a point, we got tired and stopped to take a few breaths. We can't lose our energy like this. The waterfall is still a few miles away. Come on, we have to get back before dark. Yeah, like it was my idea to chase you. He caressed my cheek while smiling flirtatiously, and we started to walk again. There were narrow trails scattered around the woods, and we had no idea which one ended where. The only thing we knew was that one wrong direction was enough to get us lost in these woods forever. After walking for two hours straight, when we were near the waterfall, the sun was above our heads. The height of the waterfall stood like a hidden world. I had been to many forest waterfalls before, but I don't know why this one felt like a dream. The stones covering the waterfalls were all covered in green moss. Even the pond where the water dropped was green too. Wow, the water is so green. Yeah, makes it look even more beautiful. I'm feeling hungry. Let's eat, shall we? Alex sat down on a big rock and started taking pictures on his phone while I unpacked our lunch. I brought chicken sandwiches, fruit salads, and some chocolate pudding. I knew the long hike would make us hungry, so I brought enough for the two of us. I handed him the sandwich and started to eat some salad first. We were eating and enjoying the sound of the waterfall when another sound came to our attention. The waterfall wasn't that big, so the sound was quite mellow. With the reverberating water, there was a sound of soil, like someone was digging the ground. The sound came from the end of a narrow trail on our left. What is that sound? Seems like we are not the only ones here. Doesn't it sound like digging? Um, let's check it out. But we should be heading back soon. Yeah, we will, Corey. But don't you want to know the mystery behind the sound? I still regret not saying no. We left our belongings near the waterfall and started to follow the sound. After walking two or three minutes on that narrow trail, we reached a big tree. The sound was now clearer. As we peeked behind the tree, we saw a weird-looking man digging holes in the middle of the woods. He was wearing brown trousers and a tattered jacket. He wore black rubber gloves and was digging the soil with a rusty spade. He was sweating like hell due to the exertion of the work, but the hole he dug wasn't even a foot deep, so I wondered why he looked so tired. What the hell is he doing? Doesn't he look too tired to dig a hole that small? Exactly. I was thinking that too. The man suddenly looked in our direction, and we hid behind the tree immediately. Alex whispered to me. Do you think he saw us? I was breathing heavily out of panic, so I didn't answer him and waited for the digging sound to start again. Everything remained silent for a few seconds. At that time, I could imagine the man staring at the big tree with his creepy eyes, hoping to see someone interfering in his mysterious business. But when the digging resumed again, we both exhaled a sigh of relief. I looked at Alex and said in a low voice, 
I don't want to stay here anymore. Can we please leave? Yeah. Let's crouch down so he doesn't see us. We crawled on the ground like a four-legged animal to avoid being seen by this weird man. After coming back to the waterfall, we started to pack our stuff when Alex said, Can you hear that? I don't hear anything. Exactly. The digging sound has stopped. I wonder what he is doing now. Well, I don't. I am going back. You are most welcome to join me. Alex and I started to hike back. But as we wasted our time spying on this creepy guy, when we reached the car, it had gotten dark. We had to drive for an hour more to leave the woods and get on the highway. Thinking how scary it would be to drive amongst the woods, I felt extremely scared. Also, the sight of that man spooked me enough. We got inside our car and Alex started the engine. As the headlights hit the dark road ahead, a cold shiver ran down my spine. The creepy man with the spade was now standing on the road, blocking our way. He was looking at our car with a gaze full of nothing but hatred. But then he smiled most disturbingly and said, What did you see? His voice was squeaky and harsh at the same time. My hands were numb and Alex's face turned pale too. He replied in a fumbled voice. What the? Did he follow us? I asked you a question. What did you see back there? Nothing, okay? We saw nothing. Just you digging a stupid hole in the ground. Now move out of our way before we run you over. Hearing me threaten him, his eyes got even bigger with fury, and he spat on our windshield. Are you insane? Why can't you just leave us alone? Because you guys didn't do the same to me. I can't let you leave. I am sorry. Or... Maybe I am not. <laughs> Saying this, the man ran at us at full speed and smashed the windshield with his spade. With just one hard hit, the entire glass cracked. Start the car! Start the car, Alex! Alex turned on the engine, and the man hit the windshield once again, making the glass shatter. I was covered in broken glass that resulted in cuts all over my skin. So was Alex, but he pressed the accelerator with all his strength, and with a loud screech, the car started. The man immediately jumped to the side of the road to save himself from getting run over. I swear, if he didn't move, we would have run him over that night. As we drove away, he watched us while cursing in foul language. When we got onto the highway, we were shaking in fear. I started crying, and Alex was petrified too. We went straight to the nearby police station and reported the incident. The cops took pictures of our car for their report and told us to identify the spot where we saw the man digging. The next day, we all went to that same place, but the man was nowhere to be found. The cops searched the area with dogs, and they barked at the ground where he was digging. The cops found the body of a young boy who had been missing for a year. The boy had torture marks all over his body and signs of strangulation on his neck. It seemed like this man abducted the kid and tortured him for ransom. But his torture grew to such an extent that the boy eventually died. Being scared of the cops, he came deep into the woods to bury his body. He had to drag the body all this way, which is why he was panting while digging the hole that day. Alex and I have given proper information about his facial structure so the cops can catch this psycho murderer. I hope he gets arrested soon for what he did. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. I was the first one to notice an extra person had joined our group. I counted six of us sitting around the campfire, but I knew we had left home with five. The sixth person had joined us somewhere along the way, but where and when exactly, I couldn't be sure. All the glowing faces looked familiar like I had known them for a lifetime. That's why it took so long to find the man out of place. I had to go through the faces one by one. I went through my history with them recounting how I met them, how I knew them. I fit each one into my memories like puzzle pieces. First, there was Mark. He was sitting next to Sarah, chatting her up as always. 
Then there was Ben. We had been best friends since the first grade. He had his arm around his longtime girlfriend, Justine. And then there was the sixth face, the piece that did not fit. I stared at him and his name escaped me. That is, if I ever had it in my memory banks in the first place. He looked familiar, but I could not place him in my memories. But why, if I recognized him, could I not remember his name? Why did he sit among us, acting as if he belonged? He stared at Mark and Sarah as they chatted. He laughed when they laughed, smiled when they smiled. Yo, Porter, Ben pulled me from my thoughts. Your head up in the clouds or something? I was just telling Justine about our fifth grade teacher. What's her name again? Mr. Smith, I said. Oh, yeah, Mr. Smith. I was just telling Justine how you could rile that guy up like nobody else. Remember that time you handed in an assignment printed in yellow ink? Ben and Justine smiled. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I said. <laughs> they laughed again and joined in half-heartedly. When I glanced in the strange man's way, he was watching us, grinning. He was always watching, always on the periphery, never partaking. Part of the reason he had flown under the radar. I was struck with the sense that he was studying us. My skin crawled. Ben drained his beer and threw away the empty can in the cooler. Well, I gotta take a leak, he said and walked into the woods, swallowed up by the dark. You know how to push people's buttons when you want to, huh? I shrugged. I was having trouble focusing on the conversation. The weight of the situation, the reality of it, was starting to hit me. A strange man had attached himself to our group unnoticed. And who the fuck knew what his motivations were? Questions raced through my mind. None I could answer. The strange man stood with jerkiness. I gotta take a leak. It was the first time I heard him talk. He spoke with an odd lisp. It sounded as if he had to force words from his throat. He walked with an awkward gait and like Ben, disappeared behind the dark veil of the trees. No one else flinched. Justine kept talking. I always loved the long relationship you and Ben have. It was so hard, moving cities and leaving all my old friends behind. I mean, I can't complain too much. I wouldn't have met Ben and all you guys otherwise. Justine, do you see what's going on here? Huh? You're telling me you haven't noticed. Notice what, Porter? What are you talking about? Who was that guy? I gestured to the vacated spot the strange man left behind. Oh, him. He's, uh... She trailed off. She frowned into the fire. I could see her mind ticking over, and her eyes twinged with concern. I knew I wasn't going crazy. I don't know. She said. Who is it? That's why I'm trying to figure it out. We stared at each other. Maybe... Justine was cut off. An ear-piercing scream came from the woods. It sounded like a shrill injured cat, a large cat. The sound split through the air and cut our conversations short. A blanket of silence fell over the four of us. Only the crackling campfire persisted. The woods were still and quiet. The fuck was that? Mark broke the silence. I don't know. Sarah said. I've never quite heard an animal like that before. Sounded like some fucked up mountain lion. Justine said. You ever heard anything like that before, Porter? I shook my head. My fingers tingled with adrenaline. Ben was still in the woods, and the strange man was out there with him. Dread filled my gut. There are no mountain lions out here, Mark said. It's probably an elk. They can make the same creepy sounds. Sarah agreed. Justine bit her lip and scanned the woods. It's probably okay. I think Mark's right, I said to her, but I wasn't sure I believed it. Mark and Sarah had started up their conversation again when the strange man bumbled out of the woods. They paid him no mind. I was hoping something would have triggered in them by now, but they were oblivious. The strange man took a beer from the cooler. He fumbled with it, struggling with the tab. It was as if he had never opened a can before. When he finally had it open, he sat, beer in hand, and continued to watch Mark and Sarah, a thin smile on his face. He never did take a sip. I watched him from across the campfire, his head wavering behind the heat. I touched on what made me uneasy about this strange man, aside from the fact he had managed to infiltrate our group without any of us noticing for a long time. He moved with jerkiness and awkwardness, like a newborn animal. 
Nothing he did was smooth or well-practiced. It made everything he did look like an act, an imitation. I didn't make the connection at the time, but I should have seen this man was not quite human. But at that moment, I wasn't sure what to think. I guess I just thought he was a freak. I considered calling him out then and there. I wanted to ask him just what the fuck he was doing, but I'll admit it, I was scared. I had visions of this guy being some horrific serial killer, and I didn't know how dangerous he was or if he was armed. I didn't want to push him into doing something drastic that got us all killed. As time went by without any sign of Ben, I became convinced the strange man had done something to him. I watched him plotting, planning, and marking his next target. Anger sprouted from my fear, and I started to see red. I needed to stop him. We used an ax to chop firewood for our campfire, and it was leaning against my seat. This man was dangerous. I was sure of it. I convinced myself I needed to do something before another one of us was next. I clutched at the axe's handle. The smooth wood felt reassuring in my hand. Justine touched my arm. Porter, where's Ben? I'm getting nervous. It's okay. I lied, patting her hand. I'm sure everything is okay. I stood with axe in hand. I'm going to get some more firewood. I announced more awkwardly than I hoped. Uh, okay, dude, Mark said. Porter? Justine's voice wavered. Speaking up was a mistake. I had drawn the attention of the strange man. He suddenly stood up, and I saw his face for the first time. It was like looking into a mirror. It was me. All this time, I was looking at myself. Like me, he too had an axe on his hand. He then started walking up to each of my friends and struck them with that axe. All my friends were just sitting there like statues as if they were waiting to be killed. One by one, he slaughtered them all and then gave me a crooked smile. Stop! Stop it! Why are you killing them? Please, just stop! Tears rolled down my cheek and I collapsed on the ground. Hey you, get up! Your food is here. Get up, inmate. I opened my eyes and saw myself lying inside a prison cell. A slight ray of sunshine peeked in from the small cell window. A prison guard stood on the other side of the cell with an annoyed face. He slipped in a tray with food and said, I wonder how you sleep after murdering your friends. Bloody psycho. I'll be the happiest the day you'll be hanged. People like you scare the shit out of this world. It all started on the 21st of July. I was an avid nature enthusiast, so I had planned a hiking trip with two of my friends, Alice and Isabella. We packed and got ready for the trip before making our way to the outskirts of town. My dad used to take me camping, so I knew a good, secluded spot that was deep in the woods. We made our way there, and by the time we got there, it was pretty late, so we set up our separate tents and went to bed. I don't know why, but I was feeling a bit uneasy that night, as I had a gut feeling that something wasn't right. I eventually ignored it as I told myself I was just being paranoid, and after a few minutes, I felt my eyes close as I drifted off to sleep. I'm guessing it was about 30 minutes or so before I was awoken by the strange noises coming from outside. I tried to ignore it as I thought it was a small animal or something, but my gut told me to check it out, so I did. I was about to wake up Alice when she came out of her tent, she looked at me curiously and said, You heard it too? I then replied to her with, Yes, I thought it was a small animal or something. Now we had noticed that Isabella hadn't come out of her tent, and that was a bit odd as we were making quite a ruckus. Alice then made a joke, saying, I'm pretty sure Isabella is the only human who can sleep through all this noise. She's such a deep sleeper. I laughed at the joke as I called out to her. <laughs> Isabella! Nothing but silence answered me, 
so I became a bit worried. Alice and I then made our way toward her tent, and as we opened it, we couldn't find her. No one was there. Alice immediately began to freak out, as something like this had never happened before. I started to freak out too, but I knew we had to do something quickly, so I calmed Alice down and told her that we had to look for Isabella. So we got out our torches and began to search the area. After a couple hours of searching, the sun began to come up. I was glad, as during the daytime we could see things clearer. We looked for her throughout the hours that followed, but we didn't find anything. I was about to give up when Alice yelled, I found something! I immediately rushed to her side to see her pointing at a pink cloth. The cloth was stained with blood, and I remembered that Isabella was wearing a pink shirt the night before. Fear gripped me as I didn't know what to do, but before I could say anything, a blood-curdling scream filled the forest. It stopped a few seconds after it started, but I could clearly tell that it came from the path straight ahead. Knowing one of my best friends was in trouble made me forget about my fear, so with no hesitation, I followed the path the scream came from, and Alice was right beside me. After a while, we eventually reached a clearing that had a large cabin situated in the middle. Slowly, and without making a sound, Alice and I made our way toward the cabin. We reached one of the windows and peeked in, and what I saw made my eyes tear up. Sitting on the floor in the middle of the room was our friend, Isabella. She was battered, bruised, and her left eye was swollen shut. Her shirt was torn off, and she was crying. The more I looked, the worse it got as I realized that she wasn't the only one there, as several other women were also in similar conditions. I began to wonder who would do something so cruel when my eyes finally laid sight on him. He was at the far end of the room, and he looked like the most repulsive thing I had ever laid eyes on. His eyes were bulging red, and his teeth looked black and rotten. To my horror, I soon realized that he was touching himself while watching the women suffer. The scene was sickening. He was getting off to the sight of the crying women. He looked like a psychotic sadist, and nothing but anger filled me. So without wasting any time, I told Alice about the plan I had thought up, as I knew we couldn't just barge in there. So I instructed her to grab the large rock that was lying a few meters away and throw it into the window. While she did this, I stationed myself at the door so that when he came out to check who it was that threw the rock, I would be waiting for him. In the tense moment, my mind remembered when my dad took me to a self-defense class in high school. It had been a while, so I hoped that it would suffice. I then muttered a short prayer under my breath and waited. With no hesitation, Alice threw the rock and it completely shattered the window. Exactly as I planned, the man reacted to the sound and he immediately started to come out. Once the door was opened, I used all the strength I had and punched him in the throat. He fell back, choking, and I swiftly landed another blow. I could feel the adrenaline fill my body as I went for another hit, but the man quickly moved out of the way, and I missed. I always find it hard to put into words, but the man I faced that day was like an animal. He moved so quickly as he landed a huge blow on my jaw. The sheer force made me fall to my knees, and within seconds, he was on top of me. He then opened his disgusting mouth and said, Now this is a first. Pray coming right to my doorstep. I couldn't be more happier. His vile breath made me nauseous, and I immediately wanted to throw up. He then hit me again, and I started to taste blood in my mouth. Anger and regret filled me, as I knew that this was it, and I had lost. But right before I lost all hope, I heard a loud thud, and my assailant fell to the floor. Standing right behind him was my friend Alice, and she held the large rock in her hand. I rushed to hug her with tears in my eyes as we cried. Our assailant, who was now laid out on the floor, had a bleeding head, but he wasn't unconscious. 
so I decided to subdue him as Alice went to help Isabella and the rest of the ladies. The man began to scream. No! This isn't right! The prey can't be the hunter! I am the evolved hunter! Unintelligent men spend their time hunting dumb and lesser animals. So I took it upon myself to evolve and hunt more advanced and cunning animals. And no animal is more cunningly evil than the ones called females. As he spoke and thrashed about, I realized how disturbed this man was. He hated women so much that he degraded them to animals that could be hunted as game. It filled me with so much anger that I blurted out, well, you're going to jail, you sick bastard, and there, the only one who'll be hunted is you. I saw terror fill his eyes as he screamed. No! Not jail! I can't hunt you dumb bitches there! I can't use you for my desires and kill you when I'm finished! No! Please! He tried to struggle, but the blow to his head made him weak and a bit slow. Seeing him beg after what he had done was pathetic, and I was sure he couldn't do anything now as he was losing a lot of blood. But I underestimated him as he kicked me aside, and before I could do anything, I watched him rush to the glass shards that were lying on the floor from the broken window. With no hesitation, he slit his own throat. I had no words, but for the first time in the last hour, my body finally relaxed, and I sat on the floor and cried. The cops arrived the next day, and the cabin was swarming with them. Over 40 women were found packed like sardines in the basement. 15 of them were corpses, and the remaining 25 all looked dead inside. As the search kept going, unspeakable horrors were found in the cabin as the rotting head of a woman was found impaled on the wall in one of the rooms. I realized that it was similar to what hunters did with stags, but in a morbidly evil way. The psychotic man was identified as Sebastian Moore, a troubled man who killed his own wife by hunting her in their backyard. He had escaped from an asylum 10 years earlier and had been on the run ever since. After the case was closed, I was thanked by the Justice Department for helping to bring home and reunite all those kidnapped women, both dead and alive, with their grieving families. It's been over four years since this incident, and I'm normally called on to tell my story at Survivor events. Retelling it now, it makes me remember a particular occasion where a girl came up to me after I had finished telling the story and said, That's a sad story. And I'm glad that you survived, but I don't know why you would go into the forest. I normally steer clear, because apart from the psychotic man that you guys ran into, there are already so many dangerous creatures like bears and wolves, so I always advise my friends to avoid it. I looked at her and laughed, because after meeting the man called Sebastian Moore, I realized that we human beings are far more dangerous than any so-called wild or dangerous creatures lurking in the forest. <laughs>